good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day you may be watching this, I hope this message finds you well. <sighs> All right. So today, I want to talk about the importance of living a sin-free life. Now, living a sin-free life is, it's not easy, I will say that, especially if you're just starting out. Because I remember when I first started my walk with Christ, and to give you guys a little background, I actually got baptized around 13 or 14 years old, had no idea <laughs> what it was about, and didn't understand salvation, didn't really understand too much of anything. But now, being almost 32 in October, <laughs> I understand what salvation truly means in living a sin-free life. So I do plan on getting rebaptized at some point. I do want to get rebaptized now that I understand the importance and the significance of it, but we'll talk about that a little bit later, probably in another video. So living a sin-free life, a lot of people like to ask, is it worth it? Is it really worth being on this sin-free lifestyle, giving up things that we, that our flesh desires so much? giving up those things that we lust after, giving up those things that we thought was, oh, if I'm not having sex, um, I can masturbate, right? I can go out and drink if I'm not, as long as I ain't hurting nobody, I'm good, right? Nah, that's the common misconception. And it's really deception at its finest because we like to think that we're okay in our favorite sin. And that's dangerous because me personally, I thought that I could masturbate as long as I'm not having sex. I could masturbate, right? You know, I was taught that masturbation was right. Then later on, I learned how God absolutely detested. And I actually talked about that in a previous video as well. But living a sin-free life is truly worth it. And I'm going to tell you why. For me, living a sin-free life has been very freeing and very liberating. Well, it's pretty much the same thing, but in all honesty, having this walk in, with God and having a true, real relationship with Christ has taught me a lot of things. Most importantly, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is what helps me to stay in a sin-free lifestyle because now I find myself wanting to listen to gospel music more or just wanting to listen to Christian-based music more. I'm finding myself to have a, a disdain for anything that is dark, anything that is demonic, anything that glorifies flesh or anything worldly, anything secular. You know, I still have some secular things that I may listen to, but I'm gonna have to make sure like it's, you know, it's free of curse words, free of bad language, talking about selling drugs, talking about lust, talking about perversion, talking about all these things, right? I have to make sure I steer clear of these things because I have to guard my gates, my spiritual gates. But it's been worth it for me because I have a peace where I used to have anxiety. I have joy when I used to have worry and doubt. Now I have faith and my faith is refilled daily and you know strengthened daily because of my walk with Christ and me living that sin-free life. Now this sin-free life, it's a lifelong thing. It's not just, I'm just gonna, you know, live sin-free today and then tomorrow I'm, you know, acting worldly or I'm acting this way in the third, you know? It's, it's a true dedication. And not many people are willing to take that walk. But once you do, I can guarantee you, you will experience a peace like never before. I used to worry about money. I used to worry about finances. I used to worry about, you know, having a nine to five. I used to worry about having all of these things that society tells you to worry about. I used to worry about really insignificant things. And, you know, when I gave my life to Christ and started to live that sin-free life, I realized that all of this thing, all of these things that we worry about, that we are so concerned about in our society, is really just tricks of the enemy. And those tricks of the enemy, right? Let's, th let's think about the, the very first trick of the enemy in the Garden of Eden when Eve was tricked by the serpent. Now, Adam and Eve were the first humans. Adam and Eve, well, more specifically, Eve was tricked by the serpent. Given that the very first humans were tricked by the serpent into falling into sin, we know that the enemy is like a lion, a lion on the prowl, seeking for whom he may devour. So if we know that the enemy's job is to steal, kill, and destroy, don't you think that 
The enemy is going to try to steal, kill, and destroy your salvation. He's going to try to get you to fall into sin, fall into temptation. He's going to try to use like little cunning ways, but all his tricks are old and none of his tricks work. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. So as long as you keep that in mind, as long as you keep that what the enemy tries to do, it may hurt your feelings, but the thing is we can't be caught up by what the enemy is trying to put in front of our, our eyes to deceive us ultimately because he'll have you thinking that you're not worthy of say you're going for a job right he'll have you thinking that you're not worthy of that job that you're not capable of doing the things that you truly desire in your heart because God placed it in your heart he'll make you think that you're worthless that you can't do it it's a trick of the enemy the enemy likes to work in your mind and likes to convince you to think that God hates you he wants you to think that, oh, you're too dirty to be cleaned up, when that's not the case. If you look at the Bible, you realize all the people that God used, they had a mess, a visible mess. <laughs> they had a visible mess. And we have to realize that, you know, God can use anybody. God can speak through anybody. Holy Spirit can speak through anybody. Let's not get so caught up in what the enemy is trying to do with our lives, in our lives, because we know that he is defeated. If you're a real believer and you really understand the word, even if you're a babe in Christ, even if you're new in your faith, you at least should know that the enemy is defeated in the end. We have the victory. We as believers have the victory because we, we die to our sin, meaning we kill our flesh, meaning we stop doing those things that upset God. We live a more righteous life because we follow the principles of Jesus Christ. We follow what God has set in place for us through biblical principle. You know, they may have a hard time giving up their favorite sin and they'll try to justify it. And that's a dangerous place to be. But if we understand that what the enemy meant for evil, God could turn it around for his good, then <laughs> we have nothing to worry about because we know that God is a redeemer. We can be redeemed from our sin or our sinful ways or the sinful lifestyle that we were living. We can be redeemed because our Father allows us to repent. Repentance is powerful. Repentance is admitting, hey, I'm, I'm not a good human or I messed up or I may have done some really bad things in my life that I need to correct, that I need to get right. The cool thing about it is God is a loving God. God is an understanding God. And he knows that because of how things went down in the Garden of Eden, because Jesus Christ died for our sins, he allowed us to repent and be forgiven. Because in the Old Testament, they weren't repenting. <laughs> they weren't, what's the word I'm looking for? Now, it's not to say that everybody in the Old Testament lived a horrible life, no. Some people did live blameless lives. Moses is one of those people who, you know, was one of God's favorites. That's how we got the commandments. But anyways, not to deviate too far off the topic, just know that redemption does exist. You do not have to stay stuck in sin. You do not have to continue to wallow in your sin. As appealing as it may seem, you know, how appealing society, the world may make it seem to sin, to drink, to smoke, to fornicate, to masturbate, to do all of these things, lust. Listen, I've been guilty of all of those things. I'm not sitting here before you acting as if I'm holier than now, that you know, I have not done any wrong in my life. I have, and I've been delivered from it. So since I've been delivered from these things, it's allowed me to be able to help people get out of the sin that they're in. There were some people at my job, they understand who God is, and they understand what they're doing is wrong, but they don't wanna let it go. You know, they don't wanna let go of their favorite sin. And I'm not judging them, I just encourage them. So. If there's people around you, whether it be family, whether it be friends, whomever, if there's someone who is around you that you see that is doing wrong or seeing that they're sinning perpetually and they don't know how to get out, encourage them. The biggest thing that causes people to experience church hurt or to turn away from Christianity or to think believers are just judgmental or think Christians are judgmental, because believers are not, but to think Christians are judgmental a lot of this comes from, you know, them, hate to say it, but not having grace. <laughs> not having grace to allow people to realize that what they're doing is wrong and to encourage them to say, hey, what you're doing may not be healthy for you or may not be conducive for your salvation. Here's what you can do to get on the straight and narrow. If you're not being graceful towards someone because of their sin, how do you expect God to be graceful towards you because of your sin? We've all sinned. 
No one's perfect. Jesus is the only one who did not sin. We are not Jesus, but we live, we follow Christ's principles. We follow God's will for our life. We live our lives like Jesus because he set an example of how we should live our lives as children of God. Have grace towards one another. Be patient with yourself, be patient with those around you, love one another, and we can help make the world a better place just by having a little grace and patience. Let me not forget. Yes, I do have scripture. Let's get into that right now. Romans 6, 20 through 23. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But then what benefit return did you get from the things of which you are now ashamed? None. For the end of those things is death. But now since you have been set free from sin and have become the slaves of God, you have your present reward in holiness, and it is eternal life. For the wages which sin pays is death, but the bountiful free gift of God is eternal life, through in union with Jesus Christ our Lord. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this message. I wanted to try something a little different and, you know, just go outside and make it a little bit more cinematic, switch up the shots, switch up the angles. So it's not just like talking head the whole time. Let me know what you think in the in the comment section below. Let me know if you guys like this style of uh, Hey Hope This Helps. Um, I'm trying to combine cinematics, trying to combine outdoors, trying to combine the word all in one video. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm super grateful that you guys made it this far. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps the algorithm and it helps this video get seen. It helps more and more people get the word. It helps more and more people get saved. This has been a fun one. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.